Welcome back to the Wrong One Popular Opinions. I think this is the first time I am actually addressing you and hopefully you can actually hear me. Today, vlog, discussion, whatever the hell it is, but I am in a chaotic mood because yesterday I was so pissed off all day that I literally couldn't do anything because of university, if you were wondering, because of university. There's this one professor that I'm writing a paper for who just will not leave me alone like he's actually being unreasonable so i was so pissed off all day long that i was really scared if i would be able to do anything because no when you're like pissed off with everything you can't really wind down and like read watch something relax because you just can't get out of that headspace so and we're going to talk about the star of this entire video which is obviously <laughs> Shirley by Charlotte Bronte. This book, I have no words for. <laughs> like, I should not have doubted Charlotte, the queen, my soulmate from another century, because even Villette, as we all know, which I gave two stars to, objectively, subjectively, rather, I could not put down. Like, there is not a single book of Charlotte's that I'm like oh this is extremely boring let me put it down because even this when there's a sloggy chapter or I'm like I do not care about this character she will either make me care about the character or will immediately hook me with the next chapter like this is a long ass book it's been taking me a while to read simply because the font is tiny and it is even in the best of times dense definitely dense so it's been taking me a while, but I've been obsessed with it. Like, for reference, this isn't really a spoiler. It's just so you can, like, get a realistic picture of it. But the main character, Shirley, doesn't even appear until, like, 150 pages in. One of the love interests doesn't even appear until 300 pages in. But Charlotte doesn't need time. Charlotte doesn't need time to, like, make you love them. You're going to. You're going to love them as soon as they show up if she wants you to love them if she wants you to hate them that's another business entirely <laughs> but queen icon i have no words so last night remember i was a mess i picked this up expecting to like read a chapter and go to bed pretty pretty upset i flew through like a hundred pages <laughs> because luck as luck would have it I started reading exactly like the best portion of the book. So I physically had to restrain myself from reading anymore because I, I am recently been like trying to go to bed at a certain time and get up at a certain time. I had to restrain myself from reading more of this. I reached like a chapter after the height of those previous chapters was like gone. But look how much I read. I have like a little bit left. I think it's, I'm at page. 405 I think it has 480 pages like I'm going to finish this today <laughs> but this is a book where even though it is 500 pages I think it's objectively her longest book like Jane Eyre is actually the shortest of the three but I think this is longer than Villette because they have a very similar font and this one is very much longer so this is her longest book this is her second book she wrote this a little bit after Jane Eyre than Villette a little bit before she died. I should have trusted her. I am so upset that I didn't annotate this or Villette because I've been taking pictures of pages, but then I just forget what quote it was. And yesterday I didn't even take pictures because my phone was charging. I am so upset that I didn't annotate this because this is objectively the kind of book where I'm not going to reread it anytime soon because it is just huge and really, really dry, but in the best way, but also not in a very rereadable way. I'm upset I didn't annotate this. There are entire chapters where I'm like, queen icon, yes. It's just everything. Okay, everything. So if, if you've liked Jane Eyre and her writing in general, do not hesitate to read her other two books. I say two because I do not acknowledge posthumous releases. I just don't like the concept of posthumous releases. So she essentially published three books throughout her lifetime, like this, Villette, and Jane Eyre. 
if you've hesitated to read anything else she has written, like I did for years, do yourself a favor because she can't miss. She literally can't miss. If you liked Jane Eyre and that writing style and just her authorial voice, read the other two books. I might be a little bit upset that I didn't read this before Valette because like you could read them chronologically if you like to see her progression as a writer and as a person but i at the time i only had valette this i didn't find in any bookstore and then i found this later so i just don't know why it took me this long to do it like valette i read i think like two years after i read jane Eyre last summer and i was sat there like wh why did i wait this long to read it this is even worse because i've had this for like since valette and i'm only now reading it almost a year later i just do yourself a favor and pick up the other two Charlotte Bronte books because you're going to have a great time with them. And as maybe like as a hook for you, but I went feral last night over an entire chapter of one of the love interests. It's diminishing him to the role of love interest, but I, I don't want to call him by name. One of the two love interests. Just writes a diary entry about how obsessed she is with the main character and i i know this is unrealistic i don't know that men now or ever like write entire diary entries letters to themselves about how in love they are with the with a woman but charlotte and i appear to have the same dream <laughs> because that entire chapter i had to keep i keep i kept putting it down because I needed a minute. I was like, okay, I'm obsessed with this, Charlotte. I'm going to need you to take a step back because every new paragraph just makes me like put the book down. This is romance to me, okay? Like this is what I consider romance, not the smut, not the courtship, not the balls, this, okay? Charlotte Bronte is the epitome of romance writing to me because she could give me a chapter about this character that I've practically only now like gotten to know he's been present for like what 40 pages at this point an entire chapter of him writing about how obsessed he is with that woman and the yearning and what he loves about her and just i needed a break after that i read a couple more chapters i think because he wasn't done with his rant but that floored like i was floored that was just immaculate okay so this book this book is like the star of this show definitely i'm not going to end a vlog until i finish it probably tomorrow i will update you i'm sensing a five star i didn't sense this with valette actually i didn't get this with valette if i will be honest because even though that was unputdownable and i loved the main character i didn't love anyone else like I said that in my review, that's part of the reason why it's a two-star book. I loved Lucy Snow, and I loved being in her head, but I didn't like anyone else. <laughs> I didn't care about anyone else. So as soon as Lucy stopped talking, I was like, I, I, don't, I don't really care. Here you follow a lot of protagonists, technically. I think this is her, like, most expansive books in terms of points of view. Like, you get both of the main female characters, both of the male love interests, and I think there's even a couple more people who get, like, points of view or sort of points of view because or all her books are kind of, you know, written in the dear reader way. So is it a point of view? Is it her just describing what a certain character is thinking? I think that's open to interpretation, but essentially you get many different perspectives throughout the book, which I don't think you get in the other two. Like if my memory serves me correctly, like I don't think you ever get chapters upon chapters of Mr. Rochester's perspective. I'm pretty sure it's all just Jane. And then in Valette, I the entire thing ends in Lucy Snow's head. I don't think there's like a whole last chapter where either of the men yap on <laughs> about their thoughts and thank God for that because I couldn't stand them. But this, I would just say one last thing. If you've read the book, I cannot stand Robert Moore. I cannot stand him, actually. He's really well written, like for what he is. But knowing that he's a love interest, I cannot stand him. He does not deserve that woman. He does not deserve that woman. And I already know they're going to end up together. But since it's Charlotte, in, in Villette, she even got me to root for the, those two in the end, <laughs> even though I didn't even like that guy. I assume that when they're actually get together and when there's romantic dialogue, I'm going to root for them because it's Charlotte. Because it's Charlotte.
But objectively now, like 80 pages from the ending, I cannot stand that guy and he does not deserve her. <laughs> so yeah, if you've read the book, you definitely know what I'm talking about. But now that we've got that out of the way, as soon as I, I've been reading like six books <laughs> at the same time, because I'm extremely, extremely unable to make up my mind currently. I want to read all of the things and then I just end up reading nothing. So it just turns out that I read like two chapters a day. <laughs> but like Shirley is now my obsession. So I'm going to finish that. But the other stuff that I've been reading, I'm going to briefly go over. I'm obviously still working through like these books. Unfortunately, there are duds and there are not duds. But this is this is my next one. I do not like Oscar Wilde. I don't know if I'm going to actually read this because I'm very liberal with DNFs when it comes to these books. Because if you cannot get me to actually slog through 50 pages, then you're not a good writer. And I do not care about your writing. Because like, if I can't get through this, you've lost me. You absolutely lost me. So I've been allowing myself very much to DNF. But there are like softer DNFs because I know sometimes that I'm just impatient. So I'm going to go back to those. But then there's the, this one, which I actually do kind of want to read. So I'm going to try my best with Oscar Wilde and get, then get to the next one. But I've also been reading this, as I've said. <laughs> Short stories. So I just pick them up randomly. This isn't really like an active book. I'm just going to log it when I'm done with it. Then we have this, which I've been on like... <laughs> I've been on a Gogol kick. Nikolai Gogol. I'm trying to say that in English. I can't. I can't. It's my Slavic tongue. I've been reading him like crazy. <laughs> like I've read Revisor. I've read Kabanitsa. Translate that as you will, basically. <laughs> this. I haven't read this story yet, which is The Marriage. I think that would be it in English, but I've been insane. This is like an antique book that my dad got like from 1965. It's a translation and I have been loving the translation. Like for reference, I don't read translated books, but when it comes to just Slavic speaking <clears throat> languages, I love the translations because the spirit of the words is the same. Like all the names that are funny in Russian are funny in the translation because they're pronounced essentially the same. So I love the translations. And I read both of those books, I think, in translation. This is also in translation, but there is a collection that I want to buy that could be in English, but I'm going to try and get it in translation. That's the point, because I actually love it, and it's hilarious. Like, I love this man, genuinely, as an author. He's my kind of insane, and I find him hilarious. Like, I genuinely constantly laugh while reading him. I can acknowledge he might not be for everyone. But he absolutely is for me. Like, I am obsessed with this man's writing. And again, the English translation was actually pretty good. But it has to be. It has to be like a Slavic language translation. Because there's this guy called Deapichkin. And that just made me laugh for like 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm not sure if you only speak English, if you would get how funny that actually is. But yeah. What is this book? Right. I think that fell out. <laughs> Of the book anyway and the last thing is obviously I mean this it's obviously this I'm not gonna hold it up for too long so basically yeah Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell I read like 120 pages of that I think in like two sittings and then I put it down entirely like I want to read it I'm in the mood for that kind of boring I said that in my other video too I want to be bored in a world that has a little bit of magic but not entirely world building building so I'm in the mood for that, and I really want to read it, but I've been so consumed with Shirley that I could not touch it. But I think this is the plan. This might not even be a long vlog. I am just ranting here. I think this is already like 15 minutes, and 10 is about Shirley. But I think when I finish Shirley, which has been like a longer project because I've been reading it in very specific intervals, I'm probably going to dedicate my time to Strange and Norel because 700 pages, like 700 pages is really not that big of a deal if you're not, if you're engaged. So I think I'm going to like do that and then I'm going to move on to shorter books and other things because I really want to read a Star Wars book. I really, really want to because I've been rewatching Clone Wars again and playing the game that I showed off in the other video. So 
I'm just really excited about reading right now and I needed to talk about it because I am hating university. Like this is my last year and everything that I have to do feels tedious and unnecessary and I feel like everyone, like all the professors are bullying us and I feel like no one's telling us anything. I just, I hate university <laughs> if I haven't said that enough. But yeah, I'm like finishing my undergrad one way or another but yeah i've been loving everything i've been reading right now which i haven't said in so long because everything has been a dud recently but yes i obsessed with it also just so we can send it out there blood of zeus season two 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 i did not think season one could be topped 10 out of 10. I bumped up my rating for that show. If there is no season three, I'm going to like knock on the wood immediately. I will actually be very, very angry. And because of that, I've pulled out this beauty just so I can like do a little bit of light research. But yes, watch that series. If you haven't yet, watch that series. If you're like at all obsessed with Greek mythology or Hades and Persephone, like I am, watch that show immediately so we could get three more seasons like they planned please we have returned to discuss <laughs> like i might actually just call this like a reading vlog slash charlotte bronte comprehensive review because we're going to discuss all three of her books now i just wanted to illustrate hang on i wanted to illustrate how thick they are so now these are the Wordsworth editions and I've like ordered them in terms of chronologically written. So we have Jane Eyre, we have Shirley, and we have Villette, just so you can like see them, see how thick they are and everything. And now we're going to be discussing these three masterpieces in a way, even though I gave one of these two stars now. And first of all, these are all like beaten up now, definitely. But if you ever wanted a plus side, Penguin editions, very easy to break the spine because they're just built that way. But these, maybe they have a like a thinner binding or whatever. Extremely floppy. I has, haven't broken a single spine on these. The only downside I would say is that these two books have very tiny fonts. So I don't know if you're like more likely to be blind when the font is a little bit more tiny. I would look into it if you like the font or not, but I love these three editions. Like Jane Eyre, which is one of my favorite books of all time, I got in the cloth bound editions, but I love these. Actually, I'm really happy I have all, all three of these. Now, <laughs> let's go. Obviously, because I just read Shirley, that's what we will actually be talking about, but I do want to compare it to the other two. So this is what we will be talking about. This is what we will be talking about. Now, <sighs> there are no words <laughs> i gave this four stars like a very high four i think i gave it like a 4.4 on goodreads and we will get into why now i will try and not make this a rant i will try and be coherent but at the same time i want to speak on it to the extent that the book deserves and I will say, loved it way more than Valette, but I, I was less bored with Valette. <laughs> that is why I think we're going to need to compare the books. Now off the bat, I'm just going to say it. Nothing can come close to this. Like nothing, nothing can come close to this. This is also like a very scratched up, a beaten up copy because it wasn't originally mine. My mother bought it at a random place. This is the only one that I actually annotated. That is also one thing. I wish I annotated the other two because now I'm never going to find all the quotes. <laughs> like I tried to take pictures with this book to like take a picture of the entire page. And I mostly captured the great moments, but I wish I did this. I really wish I did this. I had the foresight with Jane Eyre because I had watched the film. So I knew I liked the story. And then of course I annotated, I did not have the foresight with these, but I should have trusted her. I should have trusted her. For reference, this is also her first book. So like queen, <laughs> but yes, nothing will top this. Nothing will come close to this. This reigns supreme. So let's just actually talk about these two and compare them. These are also both 
I say less known, but on Goodreads, Jane Eyre has like over a million, I think, reviews, and these two both have under a hundred thousand, or this one has barely a hundred thousand. So they're definitely less known. <laughs> now, Goodreads, obviously, like IMDb or any tracking site, isn't like indicative of how popular these are in modern culture because it's Charlotte Bronte. And this one also has a cloth bound edition, but they're definitely less known. And this one is definitely a loss less known and red than the lead because I think this is the only one that doesn't have the cloth bound version. Now, we will be comparing these two, but I'm just going to hold up Shirley because, <laughs> because that's the thing. That's the topic of conversation. We discussed the let last summer. Now, this, she wrote while she was grieving pretty much all of her siblings. They all died, like, in the year that she was writing and finishing this book, which is very tragic, obviously. But as far as I can understand, like, from the introduction, just from the biography that I read of, like, the Brontes and all the context that I kind of have, this book was kind of a response to the criticism she received for Jane Eyre, that it was very, like, melodramatic and sentimental and stuff, which excuse me but she wanted to make this as she herself says like as unromantic as a monday morning however it is charlotte bronte the romance in here is beautiful <laughs> like she can't make it unromantic unfortunately with the way that she writes and with the thoughts that she has and the ideas and views and dreams she wishes to express she can't be as unromantic as a Monday morning. It just doesn't work that way. I'm sorry, Charlotte, my queen. It just didn't come across that way. Now, I will be comparing them first and then I will actually give you my review so you can like tap out if you don't want the review. I will try and mark it for spoilers because I do need to discuss it. Consider this a wrap up at this point. Like I gave you a bit of a update in the beginning like what i've been recently reading that's pretty much a wrap up we're going to consider this a wrap up and we're just going to discuss surely because that's been pretty much my main book for like a while now so i might even call this a wrap up <sighs> now let's just go and compare the two because i'm dawdling I, i'm dawdling because i'm stalling because i i almost don't want to discuss it <laughs> are you comfortable are you settled in <laughs> let's discuss okay these two. I don't know how many years apart they were written. I know this one was like a few years after Jane Eyre, I think 19, 1848 or something, and this one is 55. I think like two years before her death or something like that. So there's quite a difference in life experience because here her siblings were dying and here she's been alone for quite a while, like at least family-wise. So I think that it's important to note that it's not that she lost hope here, but you can tell her outlook on some things is a bit more morose. <laughs> and specifically in regards to the ending, like you already know this if you've watched me review the let, I had qualms with that ending. Like I primarily give, gave it two stars because I disagreed with the ending and with the sentiment. Of the ending. I thought she was a little bit too depressing intentionally. Not completely, but <laughs> you get what I'm aiming at if you've seen me talk about Villette before. Not so here. This is absolutely, so I can just reassure you, very much a conventionally happy ending, like Jane Eyre, which I think is why she wanted to like go a different way with this one. However, <laughs> However, there's always like a but. We're not going to discuss Jane Eyre because I've said this, that is like untouchable. She hasn't come close to this with either of those books. So we're just going to compare the two because they both have their flaws. This one is subjectively better to me, but I feel like if you lean more towards her message in Villette, I feel like you would easily prefer Villette. And I wouldn't begrudge you for preferring either one when it comes to these books, because I think it's very subjective which you would prefer. Like this one I gave four stars, this one I gave two. But as I said in my review of Villette, I find her books unput downable. Like even the two star book, I couldn't wait to read. I kept picking up and I finished very easily. So it's not objectively a two star book 
because in my opinion it's still well written is just subjectively a two-star book i didn't like what she was aiming at i didn't like what she was saying in the end and what her point was here though i'm a little bit torn which we will get into in the spoiler bit but we're still in the non-spoiler bit so this book has four protagonists unlike the other two which have one protagonist Two are men, two are women. Now this is a spoiler. It says it says so right here. There is one character I did not enjoy at all, at all. And the one thing I have to tell her with juggling so many perspectives is that it could drag. Like I, again, ironically, ironically, because I read all of these books compulsively. Like when I did pick it up, I couldn't put it down. This was the most boring to me. I think it might have been specifically because we juggle all these protagonists and I do not care about them equally. Like at least when we're in one character's head, you know kind of that even when something is boring, it like colors that character's worldview. Like you're still inside their head, you see what they're thinking, what they're seeing, what they're believing. And if you like that character, you're not going to mind the detours. I minded the detours here because not always the characters who took them were characters that I liked which I think definitely dragged this book down. We're going to get into that in the spoiler bit, I repeat. But <laughs> of the four perspectives, the first one was the one that dragged. <laughs> so like, I think the hardest part for me was actually like the first 150 pages until Shirley, the titular protagonist, shows up. Like the first 150 pages, obviously I got through them. And they had their upsides because the other female character is also one that I really enjoyed. But my God, my God, did those like first 150 pages feel like they were 300. And then the next like 300 felt like they were 150, if that makes any sense. So <laughs> just a fair warning, this one was the toughest for me to get into. And now that I look back on it, the toughest on me too keep reading like whenever i got to a chapter that didn't focus on the characters that i liked i'd just be like oh my god this is i'm gonna give up i'm, I'm this is so boring this is so bad but then obviously i'd get to a character that i did like and i was like oh yes charlotte i mean i need to trust you because you're brilliant <laughs> so definitely dragged more than this because this has again one protagonist and you everything that happens boring or not is through the eyes of Lucy Snow. Not so in this book. <laughs> Not so in this book. However, however, and I don't want to sound like I'm this huge romance reader. We've established that I'm not. And I'm now going to say that I read her books for the romance, even though she always has a romance, because it always feels like a little treat with her, if that makes sense. Like you don't read her books just for the romance because i feel like you would hate them there's way too little of the romance except in jane eyre and even then it's like sprinkled in with a lot of yearning and angst but if you read these for the romance i have no idea how you would ever finish them like this is 500 pages of so many characters and what they're doing and what's going on in society that i feel like if you were in this for the romance like you would not be finishing this book <laughs> however i would be lying if that if i didn't say that that was my favorite part <laughs> of her books that that is where you will find me giggling and squealing and kicking my little feet and just being ecstatic that i'm reading her books <laughs> so the romances in here there are two also says that on the back one i was absolutely feral about <laughs> the other i wish it wasn't there and I think this is why I bumped it down the star. Like primarily I bumped it down from five stars because unlike Jane Eyre, I did not care about all the characters. One of the romances did not hit for me. It was a little bit wishy-washy, even how it happened. And <laughs> there are parts where it dragged. I can't say that for the other two books. There are parts where it dragged. And now I have to admit, <laughs> that of these two books and i were to tell you oh i didn't like one of the romances in here and parts of it dragged you would be like you gave this four stars you gave this two 
this is why like this is why subjective enjoyment okay subjective enjoyment the reading process of this i preferred but the outcome and strength of certain feelings and characters and thoughts i preferred in this and that is just something that i value a lot more than reading experience or skill because at the end of the day all books are experienced through subjective enjoyment so even though i objectively think both of these are great books i subjectively enjoyed the outcome of this one a lot more than this one <laughs> i am spinning myself in circles but i do hope you see what i mean so if i were to recommend these i think i would have to really really dig into what you prefer in a book to be able to recommend them because i don't think you should look at the ratings because both of these are fantastic books and i would recommend them however if you were to want more details as to why this is two stars and this is four i feel like we would need to have a way more in-depth discussion about what you actually like in charlotte's books or in books in general now let's get into the spoilers now because i am bursting <laughs> My throat hurts a little bit when I talk too much, which I don't do often. <laughs> you wouldn't know, obviously, because all I do is talk to you, but the mic thing is like falling. Anyway, <sighs> spoilers. Robert Moore can straight up go, <laughs> I'm trying not to curse, but like fuck himself. <laughs> I'm Slavic. I have to curse. I'm sorry. Fuck himself immediately. Like, I do not like him. I see what she was going for. Like, as with most characters in her books, I see what she was going for, like what she was aiming at, what her point with the character was. I understand that. <laughs> However, it does not mean that I have to like him. Okay, I don't. I do not think that he is likable, like, at all. He is similar to the teacher in Valette, where I sort of feel like she wants me to like him, so she just changed the way she was writing him, and now all of a sudden I'm supposed to like him. It unfortunately doesn't work like that, Charlotte. It worked with the other guy because we had one protagonist. Robert, however, is the protagonist in this book, <laughs> so I was forced to see him behave and think, and I did not like it. I did not like it one bit, okay? I do not like that man. He is horrendous. Caroline Hellstone deserved better, okay? If Robert Moore has no haters, I am dead. Caroline deserved better. And I think, and I said this in my review, I actually think my review is pretty coherent because I was typing it up while I was cycling, like on my home bike, and I got in a decent two and a half, three kilometers while I was typing that, but this this thing it was just foul to me how robert sort of was written in like a reward for caroline like she's been pining for so long he's been written in like a reward for her at the ending i did not like that it was giving the hero gets the girl simply because he's the hero i did not like it like <sighs> robert should have just fucked off <laughs> anywhere in the world and caroline there was this bit of the book where she's like I'm saying this as if you haven't read it, you're here for the spoilers. So if you haven't read it, there's this bit of the book where Caroline meets her mother and is like, her mother is like, I will give you all my possessions. Come and live with me. You can be single all your life. You're going to have money, essentially. And I was like, sister, I was so hoping that that would actually happen. That she would go and live with her mother, have be like cared for all her life, you know, be, have money, not have to work be in the countryside, like hang out with Shirley and her husband, just have a great time being single and getting over this dumpster of a man, <laughs> unfortunately, because it says on the other side of the book that there's two love stories. I was like, there's no way she's definitely ending up with Robert. And I was distraught. I was distraught, actually. <laughs> now, their actual dialogue of them, like confessing to each other, again, it's Charlotte you can't really miss it's similar with lucy and the professor in the let like when she wants me to like him i will like him because the dialogue will be god dear however let's actually move on from these two and i will just say if you're wondering if i like caroline or not i love caroline 
as a character, as a person, as what she represents as like an exploration of a woman who's actually provided for, but is kind of bored with her life. I would have really, really loved Caroline if, again, she did not end up with a man. Simply because I think it would have been a really powerful story to tell that like she needs to get over him and not get this guy just because she wants him because she needs to realize that he doesn't deserve her. And I feel like just because her entire storyline was like centered around and like revolved around what where Robert was, what he was doing, who he was marrying, what he wanted to do, like even her health and life and mood depended on this man. I feel like if it wasn't for that, I definitely would have liked Caroline a whole lot more. So that's on Charlotte. But Caroline as a person and as like her opinions and her friendship was surely beautiful and I loved her. I just wish she wasn't so Robert focused as a character. Now let's get to the better part of the book. I keep rearranging myself just because I'm like <sighs> gearing up for this. Louis. Louis, who literally shows up like 300 pages into the book. I have no words. <laughs> I think all of the pictures that I took of the pages are pretty much Louis chapters <laughs> because when I tell you that I was never in love with a man as quickly introduced as with Louis Moore. Again, all of his chapters, I said that before, are him just writing journal entries about what Shirley looked like, what she was doing that day. The pining, the yearning, the absolute love that he feels for her in those chapters drove me insane. I had to like do this with the book, like every now and then I have to put it down. I had to like take a breather because it was too, I teared up, okay? I teared up <laughs> several times while reading the Louis chapters and then the Louis and Shirley chapters because that was Jane Eyre level. That was Jane Eyre level. And the reason that it isn't five stars is because we had that and that was not the largest part of the book. <laughs> the largest part of the book was Robert and Caroline. I And I hated that. I actually hated that, okay? It was an interesting exploration, but again, this was so vastly superior. I also do understand it's probably a little difficult to like base the book on their relationship because they already had a relationship technically because you realize that Shirley and Louis knew each other before she was his pupil. And I absolutely love how Charlotte manages to put in almost all of her books, the relationship she had with the professor in Belgium. I find that hilarious. <laughs> like the tutor pupil relationship is clearly something that she could not avoid. She somehow avoided it in... Jane Eyre, but also not really because like she was his employee. So clearly Charlotte had stuff that she needed to talk about. And it was always that, that dynamic, but I'm like, I'm just those pages. I wish I could read them out to you, but I, I can't right now. And I don't want to because I need a minute. However, them their confession scene it was equal to some of the best Jane Eyre chapters their difference with Jane Eyre is that the entire book is dedicated to them it's not distracted by a, a, an inferior relationship but those few chapters that we got I was sat I was enamored I was mesmerized by the writing and her skill when discussing emotions like love and passion and just this soulmate bond, I um, <laughs> I may actually like in the next clip find one of the pages and read them out to you because some of the quotes genuinely made me like lose my mind, lose my mind. I haven't felt that way since Jane Eyre and I'm so happy she did that. I am so happy she did that. And I just wish it wasn't overshadowed by the other two idiots. I really, really do. I'm just trying to separate the clips because like, if you're someone who makes videos, it's a pain to edit if the clips are way too long. <laughs> but I was losing my mind. I was like clapping the book. I was like pressing it to my head. I was losing my mind during those two chapters. 
especially with the confession. It's called, I think, written in the schoolroom, written in the schoolroom. That chapter, it's, <laughs> I think if I were to annotate it, that chapter would be like every single page annotated because she has this power of building tension, even though you know exactly what's going to happen. Like, you know, either one of them is going to confess their love for the other, but the tension, the buildup, the back and forth, the banter, the snippy dialogue, the sarcasm, the teasing, just the entire chapter screamed Jane and Rochester. And um, <laughs> I, I giggle just remembering that chapter. Everything with Louis was phenomenal, but as soon as like the two characters were connected, I was I was insane. Like even after the confession, like she keeps it going. They're like their glances, the little touches. Like when her uncle like curses at her and she almost faints and he kisses her and then literally lunges at her uncle and almost strangles him. Hmm. And how there's this dialogue. I'm remembering it. I mean I read it now. There the last 80 pages damn that he took a lot out of me but there's this dialogue where he's like i stand between miss kildar and annoyance from now on everything that vexes her like i will protect her against like i will f I actually let me <laughs> let me find the pages that i took a picture of because i need to share this and then once i'm done gushing i think we're going to end the video because i i have to end the video <laughs> i have to end the video somewhere and let's go Let's get going. We have the images. Again, I wish I annotated this so I could have like a more quality way of showing this off to you, but I'm going to do my best here. Okay, because I am actually, actually losing my mind. Okay, how do we do this? Hang on. Written in the schoolroom. Yeah, that's <laughs> pretty much almost all of the images that I, I pretty much took a picture of, I think, like everything in that chapter. <sighs> I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Okay, I think, yeah, the rest is... Hang on. Okay, written in the schoolroom. <sighs> I'm losing my mind just reading this, honestly. Just be patient with me for a minute. There we are. I have to tell you that for four years you have been growing into your tutor's heart and that you are rooted there now. I have to declare that you have bewitched me in spite of sense and experience and difference of station and estate. You have so looked and spoken and moved, so shown me your faults and your virtues, beauties rather, they are hardly so stern as virtues, that I love you, love you with my life and strength. It is out now. She sought what to say, but could not find a word. She tried to rally, but vainly, I passionate, passionately repeated that I love her. Mm. The fact that this entire chapter is written as him recounting the event, like it doesn't happen in real time. It's just his diary entry makes me absolutely go insane. I repeat, I do not think that is how men process love. Maybe they did then. I don't know, obviously, but... I think Charlotte is reaching a little bit, but unfortunately for both of us, I am also reaching in that way, so I'm with her. Have you nothing to say to me? Have you no love for me? A little bit. <laughs> like, she's killing him here. Oh, good grief. No, this entire thing, I... I um, <sighs> I could have trifled with her, but it would not do. Life and death were at stake. Mastering at once the sixpence and the hands that held it, I, de I demanded. Am I to die without you, or am I to live for you? I I'm going to jump out of the window over there. Charlotte was at this point single. She married the in the last year of her life, which is e was even after Villette. So she and her, I mean, <laughs> me and her, <laughs> were both delusional. But we had standards we would not compromise. And I love her for that. I really do. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Die without me if you will. Live for me if you dare. Our 
are we equal then, sir? Are we equal at last? You are younger, frailer, feebler, more ignorant than I. Will you be good to me and never tyrannize? Will you let me breathe and not bewilder me? You must not smile at present. The world swims and changes around me. The sun is a dizzying scarlet haze, the sky a violet vortex whirling over me. I, w I am a strong man, but I staggered as I spoke. All creation was exaggerated. Color grew more vivid, motion more rapid, life itself more vital. I hardly saw her for a moment, but I heard her voice. P pitilessly sweet. She would not subdue one of her charms in compassion. Perhaps she did not know what I felt. <sighs> Dear Louis, be faithful to me. Never leave me. I don't care for life unless I may pass it at your side. Something more. She gave me a change. It was not her way to offer the same dish twice. Oh, I'm losing my mind, actually. Mr. Moore, teach me and help me to be good. I do not ask you to take off my shoulders all the cares and duties of my property, but I ask you to share the burden and to show me how to sustain my part well. Your judgment is well balanced. Your heart is kind. Your principles are sound. I know you are wise. I feel you are benevolent. I believe you are conscientious. Be my companion through life. Be my guide where I am ignorant. Be my master where I am faulty. Be my friend always. So help me God, I will. <laughs> I don't think I've felt like this since Jane Eyre. I have no words. <laughs> I literally have no words. I'm just going to read you like another excerpt from later because I need to, I need to process this somehow. <sighs> there it is. I perceive more than you would wish me to perceive. Hardly, sir, said I. We have no disguises. Will you permit me to intimate that any further observations you have to make may as well be addressed to me? Henceforward, I stand between Miss Kildar and all annoyance. You. What have you to do with Miss Kildar to protect, watch over, serve her? <sighs> and like, yeah, she... <laughs> I kissed her, and then, if I were to perish, I cannot give a clear account of what happened in the course of the next five minutes. I'm just... She will but the more zealously advocate my cause, because she has left me in anger. I am glad of this, not for my own sake, but for that of my life and idol, my Shirley. I'm losing my mind. I am losing my mind here. Okay. Yeah, okay. And she also, like, avoids it. Like, you can tell there's one singular dynamic she wants between a woman and her husband. And it's the same as in Jane Eyre. I think that was maybe her biggest, not mistake, but tropiness. All her best romances are exactly the same, but you can't help that. You can't help that because that's what you gravitate towards. I would say that only one of my books has the romance. And again, it is what I gravitate towards because that's just how you kind of write. They tease each other in the same way. She like ignores him before the wedding. It's literally the same dynamic. I bent a knee to the flags at her feet. <sighs> I swear to God. Be reasonable, Louis. Be patient. I like you because you are patient. Like me no longer, then. Love me instead. Fix our marriage day. Think of it tonight and decide. I'm sorry. Like me no longer, then. Love me instead? <laughs> Let's cut the video here, actually, because um, I think that's enough. <laughs> I think we've said all that we needed to say. I am, I, I'm done. I am absolutely done. See, unfortunately for me, unfortunately for me, I have now read all three of these. <laughs> like, I've been putting off the let because I didn't know anything could come close to Jane Eyre. And then I put off Shirley because I did not like the let. But all three of these. 
as I said earlier in the video, I don't like posthumous work. It's not something the author approved or wanted published. So these are the three Charlotte Bronte books that she approved and published and saw into the world. And I've read them now. And she is one of my favorite authors of all time. She just is. I feel like she is, as Anne would say, a kindred spirit. Her voice, her thoughts, her soul that speaks through these words directly speaks and relates to mine. And I feel like if we lived in the same time, we would be platonic soulmates. I would genuinely adore her. And I, I love her. I love her voice. I love her thoughts. I, I genuinely adore her. <laughs> that is all that I can say about this. And I feel like through the centuries, authors can speak to you. And she has spoken to me. She has certainly spoken to me and I cherish her and the fact that I actually got to speak to her, even for this, <laughs> this short of a time. I'm very happy that I got to speak to her and got to know her and I see my thoughts reflected in a completely different time and completely different century. So masterpieces, I will definitely be speaking about them again. Let's not lie to each other. But as a conclusion of this video, all that I wanted to say, this was a, again, a wrap up of sorts. All that I wanted to say was <laughs> read all three of these books. If you like just one of them, assume you're going to like the other two because her style and her voice is very consistent throughout. The only thing that I will say now immediately is <laughs> if you like the focus on all of these have like social commentary, commentary on women and commentary on the relationship. If you like the romance and the focus on a true like soulmate romance, this is the book for you. If you prefer more social commentary and more of a juggling between very different characters, but with a great romance and another less great romance, that you may enjoy, but still read this, <laughs> read this. And if you want a very specific and particular main character going through life and learning to get over someone and learning to embrace a new love that comes along that was unexpected and that changed her and that definitely changed and impacted her life and just the musings of a person going through their ups and downs and a potentially potentially bittersweet ending, which I have to highlight, then read Valette. <laughs> and that would be my recommendation for you and for everyone interested in Charlotte Bronte. Now, I will end the video by saying I did not like Anne Bronte at all, <laughs> like at all. I had that book and I started it, was not enjoying it. Then I saw the TV series and I donated that book to the library. So I no longer have or care about Anne Bronte. She is just not for me. What she talks about, how she talks about it, and just her style is completely not for me. Emily, on the other hand, I have Emily's poetry in the book of Black Classics that I'm reading. So I will get to Emily very soon. But as far as Wuthering Heights go, I've already said I do not like that style. I do not like the style and I do not like unlikable characters, unlikable pathetic characters. I do not like that. However, Wuthering Heights is extremely short. Like all of these books <laughs> are like four to 500 pages and I didn't have a problem with them. But Wuthering Heights that has like 200, cannot read. I cannot read. I tried like three times. Every time I get like one chapter farther and I hate it. Like I fall asleep every time I pick up that book. So maybe one day I will force myself like to muscle through it just so I can say I've tried two out of the three sisters, but for now, just assume that Charlotte is the only one that I like of the three of them. And that wraps up the video. It was extremely long. I will make sure to actually like mark it. So if you just care about the books that I'm currently reading, you can check that out. If you care about spoilers or not spoilers, you can see what you're interested in. But yes, this was essentially a <laughs> Charlotte Bronte review now that I've finished her works and I have nothing but praise to say for her and do not be deterred by the fact that I gave Valette two stars because it is still a fantastic unputdownable beautifully written book I just do not like bittersweet endings so that is it <laughs> I hope you somewhat enjoyed because I haven't done a positive rant in so long I feel like I've been bitching for months which obviously hasn't been my fault but I've been bitching for months and you finally get to see a positive rant where I go absolutely insane and lose it over fictional people. So 
I hope you liked it. And we'll see you in the next video.